you the power of god i i don't know but there are people god is raising to become mighty vessels i just saw an anointing rest on you this role in the name of jesus i don't know where you are but i pray may that grace now let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension in the name of jesus christ welcome to christocentric message on this channel you are going to get soul lifting messages faith-based content prayer drills and videos that would help you grow spiritually remember to subscribe to the channel like the video you are about to watch and comment on it stay blessed hmm. there is a warfare dimension to expansion there is a warfare dimension to advancement scattered from genesis to revelation you would find out that god's people desire to move to advance even territorially and none of it was without any resistance even ground there are controlling powers in every territory with no exception the bible is not silent as to the fact that we are not alone in this side of god's kingdom the bible is very vocal as to the fact that there are strangers and there are demonic forces that have an assignment to thwart and to sabotage the purposes of god in our lives scripture tells us very clearly that the whole world lies in wickedness paul was mentoring the church in ephesus and when he began to talk to them about their positional advantage and their oneness in christ ephesians 1 2 and 3 then he also did not leave them in the dark if uh 16 or 26 he was talking about the church the first mention of the word church jesus started the discourse this way he said who do men say that i the son of man am and some said you are a liar some said you are one of those prophets and he said well you have walked with me what is your verdict about me what do you say that i am and peter speaking by the spirit he said i know who thou art thou art christ the son of the living god and then he said blessed be thou simon son of jonah for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but the spirit of our father in heaven he says and now you are peter and upon this rock he said i will build my church and he was very quick to tell you there is only one resistance to the church it's called the gate of hell that i will structure the church in a way that it will be able to triumph over the principal opposition called the gate of hell every enviable destiny in christ has an onslaught of darkness prepared to wage war when satan left jesus christ the bible declares after his temptation remember he came out of the river being baptized of john and the bible says the spirit drove him into the wilderness having fasted for 40 days and nights satan came to him and when he triumphed over satan the bible says satan left him for a season not forever for a season the next time satan would come to him he came through the compassion of peter to beckon on him to not go to the cross and jesus looking at peter he said get thee behind me satan and he said peter satan had desired to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not he says and when thou art converted strengthen your brethren use this formula every time you see them dwindling know that behind their vacillations there is a devil rebuke that devil the next time he would come the final time he came through judas judas was not a bad man he was just a greedy man who wanted to make money out of the truth you see when you are close to the truth be careful there are many things that can happen you can be transformed by the truth or you can make money out of the truth there were many people who were close to the truth some doubted the truth thomas some believed the truth peter some denied the truth peter also some were transformed by the truth john other people made business out of the truth judas just because the truth is near you you have an option to choose what to do around the truth i choose to be transformed by the truth are we blessed yeah. the assumption that demonic powers are not there 
is not a wise assumption the assumption that demoniacal force is just follow a select group of people is a deception itself let me assure you by the authority of scripture that there are real demons there are real spirits and they are assigned across territories their assignment to thwart everything that represents the purposes of god you don't have to hurt anybody you don't have to look for anybody's trouble just find yourself on this side of god's kingdom and make a commitment to live your life serving the purposes of god and you've drawn that battle line they will attack families they will attack individuals they will attack churches they will attack men of god they will attack priesthood they will attack territories are we together now this is not to scare you but it's an information that helps you to appreciate the victory that has been given to us in christ follow me now that scripture luke chapter we have a very brief session this morning let's read from verse 22 luke 8 and verse 22 please follow this story carefully now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples what was the mission and he said to them let us go over to the other side so it was a mission of enlargement and advancement we have ministered to these people here but we need to move to higher realms of impact as far as the assignment is concerned the mission was enlargement the mission was increase and the bible says they launched forth next verse let me stop here and encourage you there are times that demonic attacks come to prove you are making progress when you find out that it looks like the devil left some people quietly it's not proof that they are strong it's proof that they are doing nothing the attack started because movement started are we together now <laughs> there are levels of attack that will never come to your life if you don't pray you are not making any impact in the realm of the spirit you are not advancing souls are not being saved through you there is no significant impact you are making in the kingdom of darkness it was when they launched forth the bible says as they sailed watch this jesus fell asleep and there came down a storm of wind on the lake and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy and they came to him and awoke him saying master we perish then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water and they ceased and there was calm keep this scripture there notice what was happening here jesus was tired exhausted like every man of god would after ministering around and he was trying to catch some rest while they sailed and the bible says there arose a storm of wind look up please every storm is made up of two elements number one the wind the invisible part of the storm number two the water the visible part you just see the water boisterous but behind that water there is wind that empowers it every trouble has two dimensions there is the one you are seeing the lack of finance is not just lack of finance the lack or the poor membership is not just poor membership the trouble with government the trouble with territory the prevalence of sickness that's just the water but there is a wind are we together now the bible defines what a true storm is the union between a wind and water is what produces storms that means if you focus on the water alone the part you are seeing you are just focusing on the school fees and your health you are focusing why do i love members they come and receive and go why is it that a territory will not be transformed why is there a prevalence of moral decadence within a territory you are looking at the water alone there is the wind the invisible part of that storm there are spirits that empower situations just when it's time for you to arise everybody your family members trouble is coming even from people who love you you are just looking at water there is wind you see if you sustain this level of in spiritual intelligence you will not focus on the real the, the what the physical issues you will go through priesthood to the realm of the spirit that's the real control room for solving problems 
someone promises that by god's grace i will give you land i will support you and all of a sudden he begins to change his attitude towards you every storm don't forget this teaching this morning is made up of wind and water you begin a political journey with a sincere intention to bless the people around you and seeing that your commitment unto god is unbendable a storm arises a combination of wind and water the carnal man will focus on just the water and you will see that you are not able to interpret what is happening in your life just when they announce that some money is about to come and you made up your mind that part of this money i will send it for the gospel everybody starts getting sick in your house everything starts going wrong you get up with your car in the morning two tires just burst out of nowhere be sensitive and be intelligent it's not about car it's not about children the quarrel with your wife is a confusion from the realm of the spirit two of you are very sincere and innocent the devil has seen something bigger than both of you if you just dwell in the realm of the flesh then you will not make advancement is god helping someone there are young people here the day you made up your mind that i will go to school and i will serve the lord all of a sudden it looks like admission is getting difficult something that should be easy now becomes difficult and they call you black sheep you are not a black sheep they only spotted you why is the unusual attack on you is because of something satan has seen be careful when satan sees a vision you yourself have not seen He's able to see something you have not seen gideon why are you hiding whereas the realm of the spirit has seen you as a mighty man of value are you following this story it was a sincere desire to move forward there are many of you right now why will you be needing 60 million 100 million except that god told you it's time to build your own assembly and you got up and took a step of faith just like our bishop has said and at his time it was 60,000 for you <laughs> was it not because you wanted your children to go forward now that high blood pressure ones will bring you down because of school fees advancement has a cost sometimes you are in the middle of nowhere but let me encourage you the same effort it takes to go back is the same effort it takes to continue there are times you are in the middle of the journey whether you go back or move forward you are wasting about the same time you have nothing to lose it's better to move forward and i'm speaking to someone here you have come too far with god in ministry and in life regardless the storms that you see around you they are not always proof that you have done something wrong they may be proof that you are doing something right are we together a storm is made up of wind god is giving us spiritual intelligence don't forget what we are discussing we are discussing the second prize once you want to have dominion over territories and enlargement you will have to understand the warfare dimension of dominion and i'm helping you to define that the, the the storms that arise in our lives many times prove that we are making progress and that the gates of hell for as long as your prayer life is down your word life is down it will look like the family has no attacks but let's find two or three people husband and wife every night opening fire in prayer do that for one week and all of a sudden you will begin to sense things around you and you are wondering what happened to me the realm of the spirit is receiving agitations there are times you come out of the place of prayer and everybody is annoying you including those who love you trouble is coming out of nowhere it is not the people the brothers of joseph were sincere people they were under the influence of a spirit that was fighting the salvation of israel not joseph most times the challenges are bigger than you is because of where you are going and the mandate and the mantle upon your life can i tell you for every elijah there is a jezebel waiting for you mantles come with their challenges don't just desire mantles understand the challenges that come with mantles most times we like to receive mantles and anointings 
but we do not know that there is a corresponding challenge if you are daniel and you want his grace make sure you know what to do with the spirits of the medis and the persians if you are jesus make sure you know what to do with the scribes and the pharisees and the religious leaders are we blessed the reason why many believers and many people in destiny fail is because they do not sustain the spiritual intelligence to know how to manage the challenges that follow anointings there are challenges you have no business having in your life except for the grace you carry joseph had no business being in prison except that there was the dream of being a savior jesus had no business hanging on the cross except that he needed to be the savior of the world i'm bringing you a word of hope because sometimes when you look at your life and you do not interpret things from a spiritual standpoint you may think why are things always like this it seems to work for others except i come why is god passing me through this a storm of wind When Bishop was talking, I was so overwhelmed and broken. I remember the first time we were going to have a crusade as a ministry. We could only hire one can. We, we only had money enough to go. Where The money to pay for where we would stay was not there. The car stopped on the way. Crusade would start 5 o'clock. At about 2, 3, we were still on the road. was in conjunction with PFN then. And I remember when we arrived... There was no money for anything and i said you people just do whatever you can do there were not many people there were less than i'm not sure there were up to 50 people in that crusade ground we had fasted weeks before prepared only to come and find over 50 people and at that time when you call for the sick you go to villages like that almost everybody is sick you call for the sick and everybody came to line up it's not now that you pray and someone is healed then they
is, is used for personalities he rebuked the wind and the raging of the water and they ceased and there was calm 25 look up please and he said unto them where is your faith and they being afraid one that saying to one another what manner of man is this for he commanded even the winds according to their orientation they thought winds are just geographic phenomena and jesus was telling them in this instance they were spirits that you did not see these spirits were the ones who were launching attack next verse now you will understand the bible says they arrived where the country of the gatherings which was over against galilee 27 as soon as they arrived the city the first person they met at the base of the city was a madman who told the madman jesus was coming it was not the governor to receive him it was not a protocol a madman was there in the cave hosting the spirits that control that city and on seeing jesus coming the spirits came and manifested as wind jesus saw them and said be still we are still going forward watch this are you seeing that this was the purpose of that storm the storm had nothing to do with the journey the legion that were in that man had received signal a savior is coming salvation is coming to this land and so let's create all kinds of trouble after every storm usually it's an explanation of why the storm came you don't know the explanation in the midst of the storm it is when god raises your son you now say so this is why i almost lost this child this is the reason why this child seemed to have had a problem so it was because i was raising a prophet without knowing He went forth to the land and there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils how long long time and wear no clothes neither abode in any house but in tombs do you know this man we are seeing was the evangelist with the anointing over that city satan did not just attack anybody he looked for the person with the future of the evangelist that was the person who 10 cities were in his destiny for salvation and the spirit sat around gatherings and they selected the person that had the destiny of saving that land jesus went there not only to save the land but to deliver the evangelist who would bring 10 cities you see that you think you are just reading a story but everything adds to everything it first started with a desire to go forward then a storm arose without explanation then we finally arrive and here is a man with a legion when he saw jesus he cried out and fell down before him and with a loud voice said what have i to do with thee thou jesus son of god most high i beseech thee torment me not we're reading go ahead for he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man for oft times it had caught him and he was kept bound with chains in fetters and he broke the bands and was driven out of the devil into the wilderness he says what is your name and he said legion because we are many devils because many devils were entered into him uh-huh and they besought him that he would not command them that he would not command them to go out into the deep and there were a herd of swine hold on ah. do you know these were the spirits that control the economy of the state the economy of this region was in fraternity with those spirits the moment the spirits left the economy went down immediately because the economy was empowered by those spirits brothers and sisters let me tell you this if you do not understand the warfare dimension of living you will never truly enlarge and advance your church will never grow 
there will be no control the controlling powers will subdue you in the days of daniel because one man called upon the name of the lord and was indeed a faithful witness the spirits that controlled medopasia at that time the spirits of um the medis and the persians that same spirit came through thank you sorry again the spirit came through the house of assembly to pass a law what was the law they did not say the law was against daniel they said oh king for the next 30 days let no man call upon any other god except you you would think it was just a law targeted at honoring the king but behind that law were spirits that were fighting only one man 30 days without prayer that's all satan needs and he can wreak havoc within a territory are you learning so jesus started the journey to advancement and he met a storm of wind made of spirits and physical circumstances overcoming the storm he finally got to the other side and he found out that the first person he met was the person with the destiny of the salvation of that territory the bible says jesus casted out those devils from him they cleaned him up and later they found the man seated in his right mind that man single-handedly went and brought a decapolis ten cities ten cities if jesus had said this storm is too much let's go back that man's destiny would never open up do you know that every time you press to enlarge the salvation of someone's destiny is tied to your obedience for every time you delay your advancement you are not the only one who suffers there are many destinies tied imagine if bishop for instance did not answer the call of god the woman he said who now has a child that is grown would never have the opportunity to have that miracle obedience is powerful because obedience is like a womb that births the lifting of others the rising of others the excelling of others the healing of others the refusal for enlargement is more than just a personal ambition you are stopping the glory of god from finding expression in the life of others the warfare dimension if you do not understand spiritual warfare you may never never make progress let me give you one scripture and then we'll pray this morning is god speaking to you first thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 18 first thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 18 first thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 18 show us the ancient path would you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest it says wherefore we would have come to you even i paul i desire to expand to reach your region it's not that i just want to remain here i also want to reach mubi i also want to reach newman i also want to reach mention your cities come on you know your cities don't forget mention them prophetically because after this conference the lord is expanding his glory to those regions wherefore the power of god desired to go that far but satan hindered us you thought it was lack of budget you thought lack of space you thought it was lack of land you thought it was lack of a pastoral team you thought it was lack of members but from the realm of the spirit we are seeing that behind all these things there is a movie director satan himself hindering men i thought the reason why i didn't get the job is just because i'm not a resident of this land i desire to come to you once and again that means i tried i made efforts but satan hindered us 
Do you know how many people's destinies are being resisted by the powers of darkness? Many people today like the man, the madman in Gadara. Who knows how many prophets are supposed to have arisen from this city? Who knows how many apostolic voices are supposed to have risen in this city? Who knows how many people? But Satan is able to hinder men. But I came this morning to let you know that there is true victory in Christ. The reason why we understand and we understudy warfare is so that we can have the spiritual intelligence to ward off these arsenals of darkness and to be able to make progress. Dominion is the ability to make progress in spite of the existence of evil. Are we together now? Yes. The primary tool, listen carefully, the primary tool for victory over demons, you have to listen to this. The primary tool for victory over demons the primary tool for victory over demons listen carefully there are three major tools let me put it that way that provide for victory over demons and the cohorts of darkness number one is the blood of the lamb what is the mystery of the blood the blood is the legitimate system that is able to break the legal access that Satan has over lives and destinies. There are spirits that operate illegally. But there are certain people in a level of captivity called lawful captives. Lawful captives means there is a legitimate ground. Look up please. We'll soon be praying. Am I wasting your time? Let, you have to learn this because many of you this is what has trapped you let's assume that this is my assembly this is my building this is my facility and a thief tries to come through the door thinking there was nobody how many of you know that if the thief hears a sign of a footstep he will run away because he came here illegally now but let's assume that someone lies to that individual and tells him this facility is my own and sells it to him and that person pays if he's coming and he hears footsteps will he run away he paid for it that's what it means to be a lawful captive there is no it's not everybody who's uh, in jesus name go no they are there legally they were called into that fraternity it is for those kinds that you overcome them by the blood of the lamb many people do not understand the dynamics of warfare no there are legitimate operations listen as powerful as god is he did not cast sin out of man was he couldn't he just say i am god i forgive you that's all no there is a legal side of the realm of the spirit he had to come and use blood as the receipt to purchase us for without the shedding of blood the bible declares listen carefully there is no remission of sin there are many pastors who do not know the sincere loving people they love jesus with all their hearts but they are still under the yokes of bondage and others just throw it away and say don't worry everything is gone everything is all right but you are still seeing the same patterns mother could not give birth don't be sad i'm just opening your eyes to something the daughter could not give birth or a family where all the men are women in that family and the women are men is the women that take care of the men you are saying it does not matter i am free but you are seeing the patterns there if you are free it must show that you are free there are families that rise just when they are about to settle on their success they go down hear me i submit to you that there is a warfare dimension to victory in the spirit there is you engage the blood you engage the word you engage the name and all these three platforms are engaged in prayer this is why prayer is important i wanted to say the primary tool destinies of men 
every pastor every leader every businessman every politician you are immersed within a territory that has controlling spirits these spirits have not allowed people to rise except in fraternity with them now if you come in the name of the lord and you say i will not bow to these demons but i will still rise my church will still thrive serving the purposes of god you have drawn the line of battle can you just pray in the spirit in one minute whilst you are seated because it's time for us to advance i now see the cause of the troubles around my life i now see the reason why god has called me to be a kingdom financier but it seems like doors never open someone is praying there is the warfare dimension of our walk of faith there is the warfare of faith you came for this session this morning to be edified pastors i give you an explanation as to why it looks like that work is under attack it's not because you are not called you are genuinely called genuinely called of god go ahead whilst you are seated pray in the spirit you are praying for yourself you are praying for your family now i see the reason why i continue from the day i answered the call of god mysterious quarrels between me and my wife mysterious quarrels between me and family members there arose a storm of wind there arose a storm of wind hallelujah hallelujah in the name of jesus please listen to me listen to me believers the first assignment before you start anything in the physical realm whether it is ministry whether it is business the protocol is that you must first settle spiritual realities in the realm of the spirit when you are about to start a business the first key is not capital and your products you will waste your time for nothing if that business is just a natural normal business that's fine but in that business if there is a covenant that lifts up the name of christ the devil is interested in it so the first key is not just to get a shop hear me young people it's not just to pick up your certificate and to roam around and drop it in offices no you have to carry that certificate and place something on it if the only thing you give is a certificate you may get a job that will frustrate you warfare i'm about to start ministry the first key is not to look for members and protocol and choir director no it's like a spiritual register you are signing in the realm of the spirit jesus i know paul i know you have to put your name in that register are we together you are beginning a journey business politicians you are about to start god has given you the grace for politics don't just sit down and say oh i know i i need to win chairmanship or governorship or whatever leave that one you have to settle in the realm of the spirit before jesus began ministry as soon as the holy ghost came upon him you thought he would run and start crusades he knew he ran to the wilderness do you know that while he was in the wilderness satan left everywhere on earth and was patiently waiting in the wilderness sometimes your prayer and fasting does not drive satan it brings him <laughs> satan came as soon as they went to the other side the first person they met was a madman in gadara as soon as jesus was done praying and fasting the first person he met was satan he said jesus i already know where you are going 
let me save you the stress of going through three years through the cross let's negotiate i will give you this i got the power from adam i can give you and he said it is written number one man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the lord he took him to a holy mountain and said just bow to me or fall down the angels will protect you he overcame him the third temptation you see was to show him the glories of the world he took him to a mountain where he saw the political leaders the economic people and he said these are all my boys i am the principal godfather within this territory let's negotiate and i will give you influence over them and from the time jesus refused that negotiation satan began to use every system to fight him the religious system the economic system he was preaching and tax collectors came to embarrass him you claim you're a man of righteousness and you are not doing your due diligence and he said i already have victory over you go and catch the fish open the mouth pick caesar's coin give to him the economy was fighting him but it was not the economy it was satan saying you tried me now you will see they brought a woman caught in adultery and they wanted to put him in trouble so that they would trap him and say you did not honor the other prophet you are a fake prophet yourself and he wrote and demonstrated wisdom from heaven he who has no sin should cast the first stone they were pricked from the oldest to the youngest he fed five thousand people kept he kept them for three days the news would have carried it what a wicked heartless man he calls himself love and he kept people for three days teaching them and not minding their welfare and yet you are insulting the government that they are not taking care of the people and he said i know what they will say bring me five loaves and two fish and he fed all of them and closed the mouth of the political people and the media that would have used his crusade as an indictment if you don't settle from the realm of the spirit you will be frustrated whether in life or in ministry can i tell you this there are many gifted people within this city there are many anointed people within the body of christ the reason why their voices do not find visibility they do not know there are contending powers that have vowed to make sure they do not rise let me show you one scripture and we'll pray can i do that zechariah chapter 1 please and verse 18. zechariah 1 verse 18. zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18 please help us media 1 and verse 18 Zechariah let's read together it's projected ready one to read then lifted I up mine eyes and saw and behold what did he see a horn is a symbol of authority next verse please 19 now and i said unto the angel that talked with me what be these and he answered me he said these are the authorities that have taken away my praise taking away my promise taking away my peace now listen judah talks of praise israel talks of covenant jerusalem talks of peace there are spirits that took these things away from my life no praise no testimonies the promises of god concerning my life keep being aborted and my peace taken away by horns not a job by horns government by horns not family it looks like it is a family taking away your peace but there are horns next verse please verse 20 and the lord showed me four carpenters hallelujah do you know one thing with a carpenter no matter how spoiled the wood is a carpenter can do something about it you bring wood bring something and a carpenter can look and say you know what we'll remove this these nails are rusted we can replace he showed me four carpenters everyone carpenter to match the horns that fights the people still talking about the horns 21 what come these horns to do and he spake saying these are the horns that have scattered judah what is the assignment 
so that no man did lift up his head ah. but thou O oh lord had a shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou O oh lord had a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head the horns please give us the scripture we're going to pray now so that no man in Adamawa state so that no man from Mubi from Numan from what's the name of those places again Michika Hong oh I know some of the places so I know it because I ate Murichi there oh yes and by the way I must eat that thing before I leave this land though is it a deal now watch this please give us that scripture it says but these carpenters have come to fray them the word fray means to terrorize no matter how mad a man is he does not enter fire by mistake he, he can play around with you but when he sees that fire he makes his angels winds and his ministers flames of fire these have come to terrorize them to cast out the horns of the gentiles that's why god sent us here which lifted up their horn over the land of judah to scatter it Please rise up on your feet. The horns that have scattered ministries. The horns that have brought fight and quarrel and jealousy and bitterness between men of God. It's not about church fighting church. There are spirits fighting the body of Christ. The horns that have stopped financial resources from coming to enable enlargement. The horns that have stopped the good works and the goodwill of people to be seen lift up your voice in one minute we have a few minutes but i want you to engage praying in the spirit with understanding this morning lift your voice and begin to pray Emprantessa leka tebraski di balahasia. Emparadasha da brakatosa de belekati. You are praying. Place the work God has given you in front of you as you pray. Place the family God has given you in front of you and pray. It is a demonstration of faith in God to pray. The Bible says, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest it and thou shalt have it. Enough is enough. In the name of Jesus, enough of shame and reproach. Enough of limitations and retrogression. Paracatoska la prende che te le catusa dia e crotosca te bracatosa la che te prende che te balacat sta paracata paca te prende che te le che te prodosco to prende che te pray it's time for your ministry to experience enlargement breaking forth on the left and on the right Time for your finances to answer. Time for your business to rise. Time for the gift of God that is upon your life to find expression to the nations. Don't be tired. There are students here. It's time for your campus to receive a fresh fire for God. I lift my hands to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands 
to you. Awesome God, awesome God, I lift my voice to you. Keep praying. You're the awesome God, I lift my voice. I lift my head. Listen, listen, we are praying. Pay attention. Pay attention and be serious. We are praying. Can I tell you this? Many years ago, I was praying one night. Help, help that woman under the anointing. Just help them, please. The Lord is doing great things here already. Now, listen, please. I was praying. I stand before the God of heaven and I lie not. There was a generator house. Every night I would go to pray close to it. And one night, I got to the place of the generator and I was just going to walk around. And as soon as I turned, there was standing a demon spirit right before me. And he said, get back. And I said, what is this? In my entire life, I did not know that men could see spirits that control people. Next thing, I began to pray in tongues. A few years later, I was praying and trusting God to bring increase and expansion and help with the resources that will make the work of the ministry work. Listen to me. I was praying from a room and all of a sudden my eyes were open and the zinc disappeared. And I saw this spirit that looked like a dinosaur. Big eyes. One of the eyes alone was as big as a human head. And the tail had his own life. You could detach the tail and it will still be alive and he was looking at me with fierce anger and he said so you think you can bring god's people into abundance from that day the heavens opened in a strange way i think it was bishop david oedeko who said initially when they started the ministry the work was not growing and one time they called for a fast and they began to pray can i tell you this there is a serpent in the wood but it's fire that exposes it until you generate a level of fire the, the viper that is hiding in your ministry hiding in your family may never be released the viper was there when they were cutting the wood it was there but there was no sufficient fire to expose it help them please please i know we came here and i don't mean to stay to waste our time but can i tell you the next few minutes we are going to pray we cannot do a conference like this and not pray it's called upper room what happened in the upper room talk to me what happened in the upper room every spirit that has stood to resist my advancement you come on that judgment now lift your voice and begin to pray engage prayer with understanding are there priests in this land are there men of capacity and prayer enough is enough we decree and declare, make it a break at all, says the Akata. Pray. Shkabaraka te brenda gata belakatia. Every spirit masquerading as conflict, masquerading as poor or inefficient membership masquerading as lack of resources lack of help 
The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. In the name of Jesus, the Lord rebuke you. Every unclean spirit, the Lord rebuke you. Karobus katebrenta kalekatia. Ekato shoto brekate. Kebrekate katebrekate katebati. Shobrondo goto brete katebekatia. Shakate brekate belekatia. Ebro koto poko to brekate brekate. Shono mano koto brehe. Elekate brekate kate brekate balakata. The Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus. It's time to enlarge, it's time to advance spiritually. Greater fire, greater unction, greater anointing, access to higher and superior levels of revelation. Pastors pray It's time to expand It's time to expand There are still souls to be saved There are still destinies to be transformed It's time to live where you are To the next phase Prayer groups It's time to expand Prayer ministries It's time to expand Intercessors the prophetic intercessors over this ministry, over this region, is time to enlarge. Ela beka teka topra kotos, ekra kete beka topros koto parusia. Skada mena kete pros kote, ela skada benta skada pros koto parusia. Shaka te brondos koto breka tele kete bach. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. While still pray, just help those under the anointing. My God, things are shifting in this place. We are able to go out and take the country to possess the land from Jordan to the sea though the giants may be on our way to hinder God has surely I am able to go out and take my destiny to possess the land from Jordan to the sea sing it Yola prayer point Isaiah 49 verse 24 next prayer point I tell you fire is burning in this place Isaiah 49 24 24 we'll start our reading from verse 24 please look up everyone shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captives be delivered is a question shall this family that has been under a curse is there a possibility of their liberation shall this family that has 10 children but none has risen next verse thus saith the lord y'all are here the word of the lord even the captives of the mighty shall be delivered taken away and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered for i will contend with thee that contended with thee and i will save your children 26 i will feed them that oppress you with their own flesh and they shall be drunken with their own blood as with sweet wine 
and all flesh shall know that I the Lord I am thy Savior and thy Redeemer are you ready to pray every legal access that Satan has over my life and my family by the blood of the eternal covenant we declare it broken right now lift your voice and pray every legal access every legal access every legal access please pray there are legitimate grounds Every legal access of Maruda Shoda Brodo Godovalako. Legal access. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, can I tell you this? Please look up. Look up. We're wrapping up. Listen. There are many families today that cannot rise because there is a name that satan is called the accuser of the brethren the bible says he accuses the brethren day and night the accuser why should this family rise when they came to seek help from us can i show you one scripture and then we'll pray zechariah chapter 3 Give us Zechariah chapter 3, please, from verse 1. Please help us, media. Let's just rush. Zechariah chapter 3. Just help those under the anointing. I see a very serious deliverance happening here. Zechariah chapter 3. Please take it high for me. And he showed me Joshua or Jehoshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. Listen carefully. And Satan was standing at his right hand. Joshua is a priest of God. Joshua can mean a family. Joshua can mean a business. Standing before the Lord to receive and to serve in that office of priesthood. But Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Verse 2. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke you. This was the same thing Archangel Michael said to Satan when they were fighting over the body of Moses. The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that had chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked out of fire? Verse 3. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments. So Satan was not lying. He saw Joshua and said, there is something that connects me and him. There is something that connects me and this family. That's why they don't give birth. I'm not here illegally. And he stood before the angel, verse 4. And he answered him, saying, take away the filthy garment from him. Behold, I have caused your iniquity 
to pass from thee and I will clothe thee with a change of raiment verse 5 and I said let there be a fair mitre and ornament upon his head so they set a fair mitre upon his head and clothed him with the garment and the angel of the Lord stood by we're reading 6 now the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua saying verse 7 if thou will walk in my ways and keep my charge then thou shalt also be judge in my house and I will give thee places to walk in are you seeing that now so Satan came to say this family can never rise and then before the Lord even addressed them he said Satan this is a family affair the Lord rebuke you and then he said it is true what Satan is saying there is a garment that your family has been wearing for some of us it's not even family it is you yourself and your life that the accuser of the brethren is having a legal access legal ground over your life why should this man of God rise why should this businessman rise oh we went somewhere it's not exactly a herbalist it's not this but something was given to us and Satan says you invited me but there is something called the mercy of God is one of the weightier matters of the kingdom judgment and mercy and faith you took all my sin my guilt my shame you look beyond me you look beyond me I'm the one you have shown mercy you have shown me mercy you have shown me mercy this will be what you'll be singing over your family that we are the ones you have shown mercy you have shown us mercy Oh, I was not there when my father was involved with witchcraft, you may say. But now that God has shown you mercy and taken that filthy garment, if you will walk before him, you will be restored into that order of priesthood. Apostle, I don't know why people don't rise. Women, all the women have failed marriages. They marry men that destroy them and send them back home. Satan has been accusing. But now that filthy garment... I'm saying this because the next prayer we are going to pray is to invoke the mercy of God. The mercy of God upon your family. See, the prayer of mercy is not for sinners. The prayer of mercy is the only legitimate ground upon which the legal access of darkness is broken. Mercy. Are you ready to pray? The accuser of the brethren finds a way To come before What's that song again? The holy judge of all the earth Points At the faults And failings of the saints Then he makes a case And then what's the other part again? Nathaniel Bassi listen and then he says I plead the blood I plead the blood the blood of Jesus Christ he calls it the eternal saving blood eternal saving blood some of you before you were born again you were involved in all kinds of devilish things my father was these all kinds of diabolic things time has no effect in the realm of the spirit don't say I did it before. No. Are you ready to plead the blood? Lift your voice in one minute. I plead the blood and I declare mercy. Go ahead and pray. Mercy upon my family. Mercy upon my life. Go ahead and pray. We declare the mercy of God upon Adam our If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face turning from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land
we declare mercy go ahead plead the blood upon your government house plead the blood upon every family plead the blood upon every church every accuser of the brethren accusing membership accusing men of God and women of God accusing families and destinies we silence you by the blood of the Lamb hallelujah 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 now please listen listen our time is up but i want you to listen to me please listen to me i want you to trust god that in this conference your prayer life will come back alive again because you see my dear people an attack on your prayer life is a real attack it's not about religious fanatism that is the platform that affords you the opportunity to engage the word of God the name of Jesus faith Mark 11 and 24 says and what things soever ye desire when ye pray receive believe that thou receivest it so prayer is the platform for receiving spiritual things hallelujah don't pray casually and just no not going to get a great destiny that way you must learn how to hold on to the four horns of the altar and pray and travail until that viper is revealed and exposed there are many of you the day you begin to pray god will start removing people out of your life is the effect of the prayer God will start removing all kinds of things out of your life for some of you it's not people that God will reveal while you pray you will start seeing that it's your mindset that kept you others habits and traits that need to leave you for the next level don't just say people are not coming you attract what looks like you prayer purifies prayer refines prayer and once you find out that you are you are dropping from your spiritual altitude your mind is vacillating in the flesh it's time to hold on to the four horns of the altar don't play games and joke with this faith work and whilst you're praying you will continue to triumph from one level in the spirit even to another can I pray for you now? You are the covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh. every door that has refused to open Amen. for you to move to the next level i stand and join faith with our bishop your father and the angel over this parish we speak to those doors and those gates a father be opened now in the name of jesus christ and hear me everything that has tied you and kept you in the same position so that you're not able to move and make progress with your life first spiritually your relationships and every other aspect of your life in the name of jesus christ who is the son of the living god we decree and declare that those forces come from off your life now yeah. we'll not speak to the gates of the territories now we'll do it in the evening but can i tell you every city has gates you can be in that city and yet spiritually you are outside that city no impact no relevance the two lift gates of a city must swing open otherwise you can be in a city 
and yet you are not benefiting from the city please help that woman hallelujah in the name of jesus for everyone here who has any uncompleted project stagnated in one place doors and resources closed by the god of heaven i decree and declare the supplies that make for completion and advancement let it come upon you now and i know we're going to be praying for the sick in the evening but right now already i pray for you in the name of jesus christ every devil in your body eating up your finances in the name of recurrent sicknesses hear the word of the lord it's time for you to live now i pray for every co-laborer in the gospel here every servant of the lord jesus christ serving in this city and within this territory i don't know what challenge and what storm of wind has arisen for others is membership others finances others land and space others your family life others maybe even your integrity and your life i stand in faith with you and i pray in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god let there be deliverance for you now And for those who are saying apostle i've lost everything through this pandemic i lost money some of you are saying i lost my spiritual fire i lost my fervency and my zeal for god i used to be better than this but right now i don't know how my my life has gone haywire i want to give an opportunity i felt so bad yesterday i didn't do that in the night because of time but please spare me one minute there are two groups of people help them please that I'm going to call out here number one you are saying I have come for this conference and sincerely I know that among the many decisions I've made in my life the decision to love and follow Jesus is not part of them but I want to make that commitment right now and there are others who are saying apostle I remember coming to Jesus Christ but for some reason the vicissitudes of life have beaten me down and i do not see that passion and that zeal in fact though i cannot really say i am walking with jesus we have one minute for you i know that there are still many more people to be saved tonight but don't worry about them i'm going to count one to three wherever you are you belong to this category you want me to lead you to jesus to start a serious relationship i want you to leave your seat and run like there's fire on the mountain come and stand before me here i'm counting one to five one Moby, let's celebrate salvation two i have decided to follow jesus no turning back no turning back I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Nina Yesune Basankoma Basankoma Bayaba Nina Yesune Basankoma Basanko ma bayaba nasahanu hakanke keno ma basanko ma I belong to Jesus never going back never going back Hallelujah Brothers and sisters, thank you. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. This is the greatest decision that any man can make. Look at me. Don't think this is just some religious altar call. Relationship with Jesus is a genuine, is the greatest of all relationships. You have a relationship with money, with a senator, with your spouse. Help those under the anointing there. If Jesus is not in the equation of your destiny, then you missed it. Now, those of you in front, I celebrate you. And those who are following online, 
and will be following by way of a rebroadcast wherever you are from around the world this is an opportunity for you with Jesus those in front please lift your right hand high to the heavens I want you to repeat after me loud and clear convincingly the power of the Holy Spirit is here to change your life say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart I believe that you are the son of God this morning I have heard your word and I declare that Jesus is my Savior Jesus is my Lord Jesus is my King I receive eternal life into my spirit I also receive the abundance of grace the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from today I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name keep your hands lifted I stretch my hands and I pray for you according to the authority of scripture I declare your sins forgiven I commend you right now to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God and I pray that you are built and established in righteousness in the name of Jesus you are a child of God there is no going back for you in Jesus name my dear look at me this lady wearing a veil shout Jesus as loud as you can out of her now now I pray for every one of you the authority of sin is broken over your life we release you as you connect to the family of God here begin to go from glory to glory and from grace to grace is there any is there okay now here's what i want all of you here to do for me there is a counselor waving a card there as we clap for them please all of you just move to my left which is your right in concert please celebrate them as they go your lies this is the best you can do celebrate them as they go celebrate them as they go celebrate them as they go hallelujah now listen listen please let me encourage you tonight um, will be my final session with you it's a miracle service like I requested yesterday you can come with your prayer request I'll be teaching and sharing the last key connecting to faith and then we're going to trust God to pray for the sick and then we'll be ministering deliverance i'll be speaking and we'll be speaking over the territory and i believe it will also be a moment of impartation when he sends a word to jacob it should light upon israel hallelujah so please i'd like you to come prepared come early invite your family members invite everyone we trust and we pray that the weather will be fair and favorable for tonight in the name of jesus christ but let your heart be open to receive even as the Lord visits us in a spectacular way. The Lord bless you. The Lord honor you in Jesus' name. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salas kade bash kana kata branda kete kotos. Kete branda kata pa kotos koto pray kete kene kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.